Greetings everybody. This is Captain Strange and uh, what I want to do today is uh, take you on a tour of some of my um, uh, Dell and Gold Key comics from the Golden and Silver Age and specifically Gene Paul Ace Peter had asked me if I would show some of my superheroes the title superheroes from uh, my Dell collection which I didn't know if I had or not but I do and uh, also a little bit of a tour of some of my uh, some of my uh, toys action figures in the same room and uh, also something that may be of particular interest to Quest and Bromstar uh, as I have been led to believe uh, he has a fascination for crazy monkeys so let me uh, start the tour with uh, some stuff I got right over here on my shelving unit. Let's see, right over here. you can see that but the lighting is what it is in this room so. oh. for the Thor movie we got a Pez Crazy lighting. That's supposed to be poison ivy there. over here are something from 1964 and they're called the Warriors of the World by Marx this is an original six-figure set and they still have the uh, cards you can collect on the back I have a lot more of these, but I just came across this box 
for the set in one of my boxes, so... Oh, lest I forget my crazy monkey here that I wanted to show Quest and Brown Star. with me for a moment while I set this guy up. Okay. I guess he doesn't like being uh Okay, enough of that. <laughs> All right, I couldn't help that. Let me go. show you the comics now. Sorry for that maneuvering. And if I sound funny, it's because I'm eating a donut again. Okay, I'm going in reverse order with these comics, so let's see if I can set this up right. First what I got here is a come on, quick draw and draw. Get this some of the more important issues here. I got some Rat Patrol. That was a TV series back in the uh, oh god, I know it was a 60s, I don't know what year 60, 67, I think it was. The Rat Patrol. Then you got Ripley's, believe it or not. Some cartoon, comic, cartoon funnies. Roadrunner. Oh, and then I got uh, Rough and Ready. I used to love all these cartoons. Yeah, they were some of my favorite times back then. Sorry for this maneuvering, but uh, then it was another short-lived series back then in the 60s called Run Buddy Run. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that. I don't even think that I've ever saw an episode of this, but it was from a TV series back then. Uh, got no year on the back, I don't know what year it was. Disney's Sleeping Beauty's Fairy Godmothers. Space. This is a nice cover. I love this cover. Love the artwork on here. And then there was another cartoon series, Walter Land's production, I think, called uh, Space Mouse. And this is another cartoon series that I like to get on DVD. I love the classic cartoons. Spike and Tyke, they were, of course, taken from uh, uh, Tom and Jerry cartoons, Spike and Tyke. Wacky Witch. The 
Hanna Barbera cartoon, or rather, comic book from a Hanna Barbera cartoon called Snooper and Blabber. I remember those cartoons also. Another TV series that I kind of grew up with back in the early 60s, 77 Sunset Strip. Ed Cookie Burns was a kind of a uh, rock and roller back then. He had a hit called Cookie Cookie Lemme Your Comb. And uh, Efren Symbolist Jr., who was a member of the Rat, Rat Pack with Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and Sammy Davis Jr. And, oh, another cool cover. This is another favorite of mine. The Supercar. I think, I'm not sure, but I think this might have been also a, from a, a cartoon series from TV. But, you know, I, I can't be sure. If anybody knows, let me know, because I can't be sure. And now, what Gene Paul Ace Peter wanted to see, uh, superheroes. I had all the books with the exception of this one. I actually bought this off the internet, which is number four. And the only reason I bought it is because then I got a complete collection, because they only published four issues, one through four. So this is number four. Superheroes. Number three. I have a couple of copies. Well, I got three copies of number three. <laughs> it's a little hard for me to make this video because I'm not used to making videos up here in this my indies room you gotta bear with me a little bit here but anyway there's uh one two three copies of number three this is number two i have two copies of number two And uh, finally, this is uh, number one. I got two copies of that. Uh, number one here. Uh, this was. Uh, drawn by an artist called uh, Sal, I think his name is pronounced Sal Trapini and uh, he was like the brother-in-law of Dick Giordano you know, famous DC guy, editor and everything and uh, Sal, he started out with American Comics Group I th well no, he didn't start out with them, but he did work for American Comics Group he did uh, Forbidden World Adventures into the Unknown and uh, he also did work for Eerie and uh, Creepy, and uh, he did stuff for DC, Green Lantern, and Teen Titans, and uh, yeah, he was a pretty decent artist, but uh, didn't get much recognition. I want to show you some the interior of this comic book, because I think that uh, this was pretty much a... Uh, Dell's attempt to get into the superhero genre by copying off of uh, Marvel Comics X-Men and the prime example of that inside here Just let me find the page and I'll show you they have a they have one character in here that has the he, he reminds me of uh, Bobby the Iceman X-Men because he has virtually the same powers that uh, Bobby the X-Men has. Let me see him. 
making an ice bridge. How often do you see Bobby doing that? Where is this guy? Let me can find the darn guy. Yeah. Must have been on page six or something. Yeah. There's another character in here. He reminds me of uh, Cyclops because he has similar powers uh, to Cyclops. He shoots laser, a laser beam, uh, heat generated laser beam or something to that effect. And uh, I can't, I can't find a, I can't find a page where he's actually doing it. But this is the guy right here. He, uh, he missed any laser, a laser uh, beam from his eyes, and then the other guy, who was also uh, the, uh, has a similar powers to Bobby the Ice Man from the X Men. He also looks a little bit like uh, Professor X there. And uh, I must, that must have been another comic where uh, he was actually using his uh, laser, laser beam power, and I can't, uh, can't find it here. But anyway, there you have it. Superheroes number one from Dell, 1967. And to continue, I got there's Swiss Family Robinson. If you can see that there. And then I've got some, uh, there's Tarzan of the Apes, and uh, they got a giant, there's 100 pages here. Movie comics that Dell liked to do, The Time Machine, what a great movie that was. The remake wasn't that bad either, but I still like the original better. Another movie I liked was The Three Worlds of Gulliver. Then we got some uh, Three Stooges. I always like the Three Stooges. Let's see, we got the uh, Tip Top Comics. And then uh, these big giants, you know, that used to come out within the summertime. Uh, vacation comics and summer fun comics. For 25 cents, you got almost 100 pages here. Top Cat, and uh, I just bought the, uh, the entire series, cartoon series. I think I showed you that in another video. Tom and Jerry, Tubby, Tarak, Son of Stone. Here, there's other good stuff in here. More to rock. Then there's a uh, Twilight Zone. Brad Serling's Twilight Zone. And who doesn't love the Twilight Zone? You must be crazy if you don't. Flying saucers. These are just some great covers in here. This one, look at, love that cover here. I got a better copy right here. And of course, the usual Walt Disney stuff that they did, Uncle Scrooge, and uh, another movie. I did a review on this one a little earlier on, and I don't even know how to pronounce the name, Valley of the Guanji. It's a western with dinosaurs. Very odd film, but entertaining. Oh, let's see, more Walt Disney comics and stories. This is Wacky Witch. Walt Disney Comics and Stories. Uh, and 
believe this is a Carl Barks cover, but I'm not sure. I know that the uh, the interior of that comic is uh, Carl Barks art. I don't know about the cover. This cover, I think, is a Carl Barks cover. This is from, this one is from 1945. And uh, Bell also used to come out with these giants, even around the holidays. Christmas time they came out with a 100 page uh, giant. They don't do stuff like that anymore if they do. It costs a lot of money. Seven dollars, eight dollars, I don't know. Walt Disney presents Texas John Slaughter. I have no idea what that is. It must have been a TV series in the nineteen fifties or something. Yeah, coupon or something was cut out of it right there. This is scarce from what I have seen. Walt Disney's uh unbirthday party with from Alice in Wonderland. Just love that cover. I think I'm gonna get this cover uh, blown up and framed. Hey, good idea would be to sell these at flea markets. Reproductions of the cover. Oh, look at this one. Another Walt Disney vacation parade from Dell. This looks like it's more than a hundred pages. And price tag is 25 cents on that one. We're almost at the end, so let's see. We got a comic called The Werewolf, which is actually a uh, Something about, oh, I have no idea, super agents. Woody Woodpecker. I used to like watching the Woody, Woody Woodpecker show too. There's another thing that they come out with seasonally, of back to school. Another 100 pager for 25 cents. And they say comics weren't educational. Yogi the Bear. Hey Yogi. Hey that boy, boo boo. And then Zorro. I used to watch this the, the TV. There probably were reruns when I was seeing these though. Zorro. So, that's about it, and uh, now I can get to, uh, get to my coffee and donut, mmm, donut.